goodness gracious goodness gracious hi guys and welcome back to the city lighters bible study we sinime mis kusema your statement it's been how long it's been a minute i'm glad i am back <laughs> i hope you are been watching and supporting and learning as miss jackie has been holding down the fort yeah. with mushiri pastor shila jerry and yeah it's good to be back ka holding kazuri tumeku miss we also rest tumeku miss ngo ni mommy spear but when you can't you got to be in the scene hapo tu nyuma ya camera so karibuni sana to the city lighters bible study this evening and before we begin of course it's customary maji ni mimi sikusema hivi ati from to my far right to my far left but let me ndio niko the far left So I guess I'll just start from the very end. Uh-huh. Uh, to introduce mtuambie. Mimi ju nimewa miss msemwe tu jina zangu ni sikia mkisema nikiwa hapa. Alafu tutaomba alafu tutaanza. Acha ni introduce officially. <laughs> officially. Oh. Pastor Mushiri. Oh. And, and it's He it's the pastor word. Inaingia, ina sink in. But it's going to take some time. Mm. Yeah, it's good to be to see you guys again here. Uh, I hope the previous episodes have actually blessed you guys. Yeah, let's let's see what God has for us today. Amen. Uh-huh. To my Praise yeah. God. Yes, to your right center. <laughs> yeah. Hi, my name is Jackie Jerry Moniki. I am born again. I am a kingdom influencer. Oh, Lord. Yes, yes, I like to say that. Wow. Um and I am a wife in waiting. Okay. All right. <laughs> new seasons, new levels. <laughs> And else <laughs> best of all I serve in the kingdom of God <laughs> my biggest privilege hallelujah amen after that what can i say me yeah, <laughs> becky mwangi eh uh, just under year older so i'm the Woo-hoo! bad glow happy birthday <laughs> hey, thank you. yes thank you and i think uh, i am uh, what pastor in waiting <laughs> amen i love yeah. that <laughs> but a minister of the gospel but mm-hmm. also a creative whose main purpose is to use my creativity to spread the word of the Lord. Mm-hmm. Yes, I think that's that's a new assignment that I'm like I'm loving the space that I am in. Mm-hmm. So karibuni sana, allow us to pray and then we get into the topic of the day. Uh, dear Lord, we thank you for this uh, time of learning about things in your word, oh Lord God. Thank you that as we start our Bible study, we pray for ourselves even as we present what it is that you've placed in our hearts, oh Lord God, that we will deliver it with eloquence, oh Lord God, but guided by the Holy Spirit, oh Lord God. We thank you for our audience who are watching right now in the premiere. Any of those who will come across this content later in, in the year oh lord god we pray that whenever they listen to your word oh lord god that they'll be blessed and edified oh lord god we pray for our technical team oh lord god our post production team oh lord god and even who makes this bible study a success oh lord god that in the capacity that they serve that you'll continue to bless them for this we pray believing and trusting in your name amen amen so today's topic is actually interesting because i think both of you have alluded in your introductions around it you've said pastor minister in waiting myself and today we want to talk about service wow. in ministry so i think a lot of times when people hear me na serving church people always do the whole oh my god <laughs> wow like kuna talent lakini unaipeleka kanisani oh my god especially i find it with creatives like worship leaders and people are band what were media team na kwa tu guy hiyo gift yako yote ni kanisani and sometimes i feel like people who serve maybe sometimes are not regarded as highly in society mm-hmm. but today we want to remind ourselves and even you who is watching that serving in the kingdom of god brings so much joy and it's actually one of our core callings for everyone because sometimes when people talk about calling they think pastors mm-hmm. apostles prophets they are not like i me miss nanga calling mm-hmm. but you see you have a gift that you can serve within the kingdom and yeah. that is what we want to discuss today so i want to first ask my panelists one question yeah where do you serve in the church that we attend and also what inspired you to serve in that particular department we can start from our resident pastor <laughs> <laughs> uh, for, for for me i usually serve in three places wow i'm a leader in the men's ministry and uh, steve I'm also part of Bible study. Mm-hmm. Then I'm also part of the pastoral team. Those are three places. Mm-hmm. How did I come to serve? I, I think I've I've retold this story. <laughs> Mine was more of a Jonah kind of a moment. Mm-hmm. I, I I don't think when I cleared campus mm-hmm. pastoral was anywhere. Part of your Yeah, even when I was young I, 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 I don't think I ever said uh, I really want to become because because for me professionally I'm a lawyer by profession. Yeah. Then ukiangalia post graduate I'm also a CFA. I did CFA, mm-hmm. Chartered Financial Analyst. Mm-hmm. So pastoral was never in the, in the in the in the mix. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just 
is ilikuwa calling which I'd run away from for such a long time. I think he accept. 3 4 years ago. Wow. Yeah. But all that time it was really running away from it mm-hmm. and actually proving to God mm-hmm. that he's made an error mm-hmm. in, in choosing you. Yeah. All right. It's Jackie. Yeah. Which department you serve in and what led you What to inspired me? Yeah. Um I number one I serve in Bible study. You know you guys see me here. Um and I love it. I and why I got inspired to join Bible study is I am a digital marketer by profession. Yeah. So I already know the social media part of everything, all those things, yeah. but I wanted to plant myself in a place where it will it will require me to grow. Mm-hmm. It will require me to get out of my comfort zone. Mm-hmm. So Bible study for me was wow. If I can be able because I love being in front of a camera, if mm-hmm. I can be able to be in front of a camera and study the word of God and teach and host gay for me so i do serve in bible study and i recently started serving in a new department in church mm-hmm. and yeah it's yeah. it's uh, i'm assisting with admin just a little bit just a little bit and i i yes yes what inspired me to genuinely serve is i really prayed for a church and i say this a lot i prayed i i, I the, there's a season in my life i was not attending church like sunday ngi ko inafika and i don't feel like going to church i wake up i sleep but kulikuwa tuna ile Mbono wendi church. So me I was like I literally cried. I was like God, I need a church. And in that whole process COVID nini nini, I found out about City Lighters. So City Lighters was an answered prayer. So for me even coming in, there was no time for me to hesitate. God has already given me a church. Start serving immediately. So, but I, there was a process of course. I mean, we always have to go through discipleship. True, very important. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so for me I would say City Lighters being my church inspired me to start serving. Okay. Yeah. Amazing. Hmm, now that I answer my own question. Yes. Well, uh, currently I serve in several. Oh, I had seven. <laughs> several almost several departments. Uh, the first one being Bible study where I help I co-lead with Ben Psycho. Ben. Hey. <laughs> um then the second one I serve in media team as a team lead for social media and also their admin. Mm-hmm. And then in Glow I also serve the ladies ministry wow. as a mostly social media for for that ministry and yes. I've also recently joined admin and there's actually a new department that's loading coming soon I can't say because we've not yet been commissioned but it's going to be great for creatives Man, yay. and I think over and above I think for me I, I kind of serve in almost just a bit of every department and why I serve um for me I started serving when I was very young because I got born again very early mm-hmm. so I started serving I think by the time I was 9 10 kind of was serving in wow. our church. Okay, the church I grew up like akuna unaokoka unaambiwa you are a kingdom nini no matter the age. Uh-huh. So like Sunday school kids would be allowed to come to clean the church on Sunday, Saturday evening, make sure mama is mepangwa, help mm-hmm. help set up their own classroom. So we were taught to serve from very early on. Then because of my pastor's kid kinda wageni wakikuja nyumbani, nini mnawapikia chai, mnawapunguzia viatu. So Jim now said, "What do you want? Coffee, tea or cocoa?" You know those things. <laughs> But then over time I said now when I became an adult, I started serving in my former church in the youth ministry and also in kind many departments Sunday school and all these things yeah. so but i also got to a place of telling god okay nimezoea ku serve is this is nianza kuwa ni kama obvious ukinge tu ah youth bible nini sunday school <laughs> so when i got into a place of getting to a sabbatical because i also worked most of my jobs have been with christian organizations mm-hmm. so i think i got over them so i then decided i'm taking a sabbatical that took a little bit too long then i said the same prayer one day i was like god i want to go back to a church to church to ministry but i think this department say ni me feel ni me fanya enough how about you take me to a church where i'll serve in my in the things that i do at work because i'm also a social media manager because i was like akuna vile mzee ngati kan say kuna social media so you know the way you tell god like jona you are like there's no way i think you think yeah. you're telling god the impossible guys i find out about i find out about city lighters i come and then i think after three weeks someone says tells pastor george that i do social media mm-hmm. and they're just like moji kuja chukua namba ya huyo and i was i wanted to hide for a while and then i say serving social media and what i did became all these other departments that have opened up and yeah. i truly really love to serve in the house of the lord yeah. but also let me say it hasn't also been easy so another question even before we get into today's guiding scriptures i wanted just to ask us just early on in the conversation have you have you faced challenges when you've served because i think also a lot of time people think people who serve have such a sweet life 
is perfect na you what you when a god munongea directly you munahusi ananga god na how will i serve today how will i preach to the people today so people have this notion of people who serve there's no way yeah or corner challenges mm. so do you want to shed light about that because i think sometimes it's been made also to look rosy in the church that mm. ah wasiona serving even like church here watu wakisema kitu ah ulize ni leaders mm. leaders what are to sort leaders what are to ombe leaders what tufanyia nini because i think in our church when you start serving it's almost your way into leadership so that we call people leaders mm. as opposed to the other titles yeah, that other churches use so. so maybe challenges in serving in that you have that you're able to share well i would say when i joined it was mm-hmm. i was excited it was yeah. a bed of roses you know i mean i don't know what's going on i'm just like i want to serve i'm ready to serve nimeingia mm-hmm. and initially it was it was cuz i was not doing much so it it looked easy it looked easy but ultimately i've come to see that there are so many nitty gritties that go behind whatever you see in church whatever you see every tuesday so i think for me the biggest challenge has been uh learning to accept people as the way they come and because not everyone is good at communicating not everyone is good at you know appearing where they're meant to appear so for me it's been like a learning lesson that anyway jackie you're not doing this for the people you're doing it for god yes i don't know if it's becky i was telling me i rebuke the spirit of frustration you know you know there are people who have been sent to frustrate you but it's not them who are free. there's a spirit that has been sent to frustrate you but why should you be frustrated you know so for me i think learning to accept people as they come yeah. and being able to work together with them has been my like a challenge that I'm still learning every single day. Yeah, right. Moshiri. Um uh, for me I'll say my biggest battle has been it's it, it's been an inner <laughs> mental battle mm-hmm. actually accepting the call. Ah uh, yeah, be, be, because you, no, no, yeah, you just have this like like the, like the word pastor and it's it's one it, it's big yeah, and it's a big shoes. and and it's first of all once you read the qualifications of a leader like you now it says you're, you're supposed to be beyond reproach so these there are those people who examine your life through the lens of a microscope <laughs> as in they're looking at you in in imperfection as in you're supposed to be perfect if you if you view so that that has been a challenge and then there's a bit of that unworthiness you you tend to believe Uh, the, the people who should be serving in that role ni wale uletwa na nini chariots asubuhi eh una drop you on a chariot of fire asubuhi i used to think you are those people you, you serve in the nini yeah <laughs> then you serve then jioni una una pick you on a chariot of fire then then you don't interact with mortals you are that scalable i think that 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 that, that unworthiness of, of 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 the position i think that that was a big challenge for me to spotlight being in the spotlight like Jackie Jackie loves it me I'm not for it so much I don't really like by beside in and YouTube I was just like god god oh my god god I really, really. I, I, I used to be those people who just wanted life yangu kwa church life yangu I just check in na ka to back seat I listen to the sermon time your collection na pia na collection nikiendanga niki left no interacting ni 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 no your life now so calling ilikuwa for me accepting it has been a one 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 huge battle the second thing is faithfulness being really consistent over and over it's 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 a big sacrifice because even right now being in recording bible study yeah. there's something else you could be doing you know but then you're doing it here so being consistent over and over and over and over every week every you know it it's it's really it's a challenge mm-hmm. i think the third one is a kwanini i think it's uh, first of all like how you enter in ministry yeah. it's it's voluntary that aspect it's it's, it's not really so you really monetary. have to yeah it's not monetary so you really have to look for tent making and you know it's like you you you're in ministry but then you you really need other other ways of sustaining your you meeting your needs i think that becomes a really challenge because you have to balance two things you're not in paid let me say paid ministry you know yeah 
Mm, and I can relate to that. And even as we prepare to read our guiding scriptures for the day, which will be Second Timothy 2, 20 to 21. Mushiri, you would kindly read for us that one. Second Timothy 2, 20 to 21. And then Jackie will read First Corinthians 12, 12 to 27. And I think for me, I can read, especially that last point that you've said about like you're serving voluntarily without like like income, for example, like how a church is structured, yeah. But we also, of course, we know there are people who are in paid ministry, like there are churches that pay their volunteers and everything. So I remember like part of, especially the last two years when I got to City Light, as you know, I'd stopped serving for a really long time. So when I came back, people were like, Tena merudi kanisani tena, kujipeana tena. And then now you get those comments for oh day when well, potential like in can church too. So people refuse to see that aspect. They're always like you're you're wasting your gifts, talents, and everything by the knee. And sometimes those words can really get to you and discourage you because you're like because sometimes you're alone, especially when the devil want, wants to really discourage you. Yeah. 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 But and then people will start saying you're being used, and those, uh, of course that toxic nini of church CV does not, you know. So a lot of times it becomes a very thin line for you really want to serve, but you're still like, like it's a sad rent, you know, all these things. And I think for me another challenge usually is sometimes you you find maybe you stretch yourself too thin, but it's not because because there's still continuously gaps to fill. Because even the word says like the work is a lot, but the laborers are few. So there are times you find you need to step up because you're like, and yes, sir. Like to kingia church on a kitu chini, how to angoja asha. You maybe ashas on a kam eleven, maybe first service how a jakua, but mushiri tuna jambia to ay because ya asha zi. When you're like, so sometimes you find there are so many gaps to fill, so there's a lot of pressure to be like, I really want to do all this, but sometimes you get and also getting tired, which I think is something you never see. Like, we almost don't even allow for pastors to go on break. Like, when you say you're taking a break, we're like, where are you spiritually? But sometimes the reality is like, we are flesh. People need to understand. I think mean, those people, when you say you want to take a break, and everyone is like, from what? The work of the Lord. But sometimes you're like, you're so tired. Like, when I'm trying to say, shoot, you're going to be Tena tuwezi fanya like maybe 12 that ya po to have a like dogo. But I think all in all, I think it's still a blessing and it's a joy. So I'd like for us to get into the scriptures and then just talk about them a little bit. And then we'll close with a word of prayer to just encourage people who maybe feel I not accept but no more. To tell them it's still they still a gift when you serve the Lord. So read for us Second Timothy 2 and then she'll read for us First Corinthians 12. Okay. Okay, before before I read it, um you see, there's this notion that uh, if you're highly gifted, highly talented, your place is in it's in the world, not serving God. So, even for me, that that, that has been a challenge where where someone is telling you, you know, you, you you really have these academic qualifications, you should be serving a big company or something, something not serving God. Yeah, it, it seems like service to god is really a kind of if you really did not ace your, your grades very well in kcse yeah become a <laughs> wow. yeah kuna, yeah there's no <laughs> there's no qualification there as why people even say uh, let, let's say you've not been you're on a contract somewhere and then someone some does does not pay you you hear someone say sifanyi kazi ya kanisa it's, 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 yeah, it's, 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 yeah, it's, it's, it's that, yeah, yeah. And so before I read this, there's also a scripture I want to tell you about. It's, it's, uh, I think Revelation 1 6, it says this We have been called to be, we, we have been called to be kings and priests. And so you see, when, when you talk, when you talk about, yeah, then you're in the spirit. Then you're in the spirit. <laughs> so, yeah, it, it's actually a very, it's, um, it's actually repeated that verse six, and I think in Revelations five ten or something. So it says you've been called to a kingdom, to a kingdom of kings and priests. Using the Old Testament, the kingship and the priesthood were two separate things. Yeah. So a king will not be a priest, and the priest will not be a king, mm-hmm. and we actually see, uh, and Pasi actually brought this out well. Uzziah was actually a king, but there's a time he came to offer incense before the presence of God, and God struck him with leprosy because they were mixing the two. But when Jesus comes, he combines the two. Yeah, even Saul tried to present a sacrifice instead of waiting for Samuel. 
and and uh, but then when you go to the new testament jesus combines the two so that's why we have you are a royal priesthood now you see the kingship focuses so much on having dominion and rulership you know kings kings rule you know they have dominion and we tend to get excited with that even in ministry you want to be in the marketplace Aha. you know having dominion and and you know and rulership yeah and we tend to sidestep the priesthood but is the thing what sustains the kingship is a priesthood that's deep what sustains the the kingship is a priesthood mm-hmm. but we tend to when you get in that space of rulership and, and 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 dominion we forget that god is also calling you to be a ministering priest to him in that space he's called you to so you find yeah you you keep saying we are having dominion but in your office space no one even knows if you're a believer you you don't even pray for <laughs> you don't make intercessions for anything you know so the kinship we tend to glorify it a lot at the at the expense of the priesthood the second thing is that at times when what what really leads us even as as we are seeking spaces of dominion at times it's the voice of our gifts and there's a place where your your gift is so strong that it drowns the voice of god so i'm saying don't allow the voice of your gift to be louder than the voice of god because when you do that that gift of yours is going to take you to places where the presence of god is absent because now you'll be selling your gift to the highest bidder and people shy away from ministry and they despise it at times because now you you're auctioning your gift where where, where does it get <laughs> maximum eh yeah? value from it but if but if but if it's if it's a voice of your gift that is leading you all that time there's a place it will be in conflict conflict to the voice of god because god will may lead you to places where your gift initially is not even recognized neither is it being rewarded and you've seen that even and let me talk about it. like like the gospel inter- industry guys started very well oh, yeah. but then you started auctioning your gifts to the highest bidder and 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 it it took the space off of the voice of god in the bible we have a guy called samson what was leading samson <laughs> at some point was not the spirit of god but as actually his gift is his strength really and he forgot that it's god who actually gave him that that strength and another example i have in the bible is esther 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 had you know she, she was placed in a place of kinship but there's a point esther forgot what really was her mandate in that position and that's why mordecai comes and tells him don't think you'll escape this slaughter for maybe god has called you for a time like this so it's very important even as as you explore your gifts and as they find spaces because your gift will open spaces for you and it will bring you before kings but don't let the voice of your gift actually drown the voice of god yeah so uh second timothy 20 uh, chapter 2 20 20 towards 21 21 it says this in a large house there are articles not only of gold and silver but also of wood and clay some are for special purposes and some for common use those who cleanse themselves from the latter will be instruments for special purposes made holy useful to to the master and prepared to do any good work right, and then, um Jackie, read 1 Corinthians 12 verse 12 to 27 1 Corinthians 12 from verse 12 going to 27 unity and diversity in the body just as a body though one has many parts but all its many parts form one body so it is with Christ for we were all baptized by one spirit so as to form one body whether Jews or Gentiles slave or free and we were all given the one spirit to drink and so the body is not made up of one part but of many Now if the foot should say because I am not a hand I do not belong to the body it would not for that reason stop being part of the body 
And if the ears should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason stop being part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But in fact, God has placed the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If they were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts but one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I do not need you. And the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. On the contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indes- indispensable. And the parts that we think are less honorable, we treat with special honor. And the parts that are unpresentable are treated with special modesty. While our presentable parts need no special treatment, but God has put the body together, giving greater honor to the parts that lacked it, so that there should be no division in the body, but that but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. Verse 26. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. Now you are the body of Christ and each one of you is a part of it. Thank you for reading the word. And I think um, the basis of today's conversation is, I think a reminder to people that the body of Christ, as the Bible has well said, is... Um, is there's one body which is the body of Christ, but in it has many parts. Just like the, your your regular kawaii body, you have fingers, hands, and toes. A lot of times when we get born again, we leave certain things with like. So we over even rely on them like good prayers. Pastor Sheila, pray for me. Pastor Ben, Pastor George, please, please. And then we forget like the way it has said. Some parts in our body we always think like the small toe, the small thing. Fingers. Sometimes even you see on Twitter people saying, "Ni God bona to patia." Is it nini? You're like, because we, we disregard some some parts of our body, and even in ministry we, we disregard even some departments. And actually, this is just part one of this conversation because we will get to a chance where we talk about spiritual gifts which you've alluded to, and again we still be in First Corinthians 12 because a lot of times we say there are some gifts that people say that they are better than others, like people who prophesy are better than maybe those who are just the office of the apostle. But today, in terms of serving, um, like the the book of Timothy has said that we are there are vessels, there are different vessels in in the okay, we'll say in the cupboard ministry but each of those can be a vessel of honor beat clay beat gold beat anything because once it's in the master's hand it will be able to do over and above but a lot of times in my experience when people enter the space of ministry they will always say mean like they you said before you to church you receive miende you mean me see that you can contribute to a particular ministry but you see the bible says that's why there are all these parts so for for many times when most of us choose to just see it it makes the work of the Lord heavier upon those who have already started to do it. So, in, for example, let's say in our church, we have many departments. Mm-hmm. But can you imagine Sunday service without a lick dancers? Mm-hmm. Present worship time without a lick dancers. Mm-hmm. People even, well, I, I mean, like, when, when there's a time like, during the marathon, because guys, hey, church will affect you, Asana. Like, I would see people panicking, and like, hey, dancers, like, <laughs> <laughs> like, worship. And in other churches, there, there are other people who like dancers. But you know how important they are because during worship time they help us be able to dance for the Lord in an amazing way. A lot of times there are services, there are ministries which disregard like Sunday school. They're like, so what do we mean? Budget here, Sunday school. Plus, nani atawa funza? What a shout? Such nani di kuwa mbaka na? You know, we disregard some ministries, and that's why I think a lot of people would say because I've asked people, especially after discipleship class, but we don't join a ministry. Ah ah ah, nasi dani ni komed for. And then I asked them, what do you mean made for that is? Because don't you realize, if we are all a full body and we didn't have, for example, let's say, who don't we have? Let's say we have, imagine we, our church without ushers. Yeah. Or imagine our church without maybe even an assistant pastor, an associate pastor. So when person needs to take a break and then I'll be like, guy, chungajutu wako holiday, so sasa sisi, tunakuja chacha kirudi. So I think today I just wanted to remind people and maybe you can contribute from those scriptures, like how to encourage people to know that they are part of the body of Christ and whatever role they get to do is important, even though it's clearing the trash after service. Because now there you have helped the people who do admin to be able to relate with our tenant, for example, I mean our landlord. So maybe how would you encourage people from that basis? Okay, let, let me make a few points on it. Sure. Number one, the, the, those people fear based on their past and their brokenness and their dysfunction 
that it disqualifies them from ministry. But it's the thing, there's someone who said, your greatest ministry will actually come from your greatest pain and your greatest mistakes. Your greatest ministry will actually come out of your greatest pain and your mistakes. It, it will be a bathing because it says God uses all things for your good. All things. So the, so the places where you experience the greatest pain and your greatest mistakes, that will be your launching pad for your platform. You know? And you see, your, 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 your mistakes, you can consider them that at that point, you lacked full information on what you're doing or whatever it was but you see when you place it in god's hand he's able to create something out of it you know and so that fear of the fact that i've done this in my past and i've done this you know there, there are people who even pastor george may not ever be able to reach them because it does not relate with the kind of story they have gone through but you specifically whatever you went through if you place it in the hands of god that would be the bathing place of actually your greatest ministry. Two, if, if you're struggling connecting with people, let me say this, it's your compassion that will unlock the grace for ministry. Your compassion for people is what unlocks the grace to actually minister to people. Because even if you read the Bible, it keeps saying, and Jesus was moved in compassion and heal people. So your compassion unlocks the grace that is required for ministry. The third thing is, 1 Corinthians 14.1 says, pursue love and earnestly desire spiritual gifts. Here's the thing, your desire for spiritual gifts will be purified by your love. It's love that purifies your desire for spiritual gifts. So that you don't, you're not seeking a gift, let's say a gift of prophecy, so that we can elevate you in, in, in our spiritual mind. Hey, we are like, that, that guy is so spiritual. Yeah. yeah. yeah by, the, by the time you pursue love, that's why you say pursue love and honestly desire spiritual gifts. It's, it's love that really purifies that desire for your gifts. So that it, it it changes your motive for from from one of where you wanna you know you're seeking elevation and the glory of men to where you're really desiring to minister to someone you get mm -hmm. and the last thing I'll say in terms of ministry it's your faithfulness that will unlock your breakthrough mm -hmm. and we tend not to be faithful. Yeah. God gives you a task, you look at it and you're like, I have other things to do. Nee, 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 nee. And then you, you opt to not do it. You see, every pa most of the people there and you see God calling them, he was calling them from a place of faithfulness. And I'll give you the example of David. David was faithfully leading his father's sheep. And you can see even he says, when a bear comes to attack them, he'll he'll go on the offensive so god took a person he elevated a person who was faithful in the very thing he's been called to do but if you're not faithful in the little how will god make you on on then on the nini you you get yeah and i'll make i okay gonna last point mm -hmm. you see when it comes to god he, he, god says he's a potter we are the clay one of the qualities God looks for in clay is something called malleability. Malleability is the ability of clay to be molded. I can only do it. Yeah, as long as he can, he can shift it and he can mold it to the way he wants it, that's good clay. But clay that cannot be molded, no matter how good it looks like in the outside, you know God, uh, I should be... In, this is the reason I, I think I should be called to ministry because I've not done this, I've not done this, I think I'm all... But as long as you're not malleable, as long as he cannot change you, then he has no use for that clay. But you may come with your ratchet past and everything you're doing, but you're malleable. So he's able to shift it to his own use. And, you, and we see this contrast between Saul and, and David. 
Saul was not easy clay because he did whatever he wanted to do. Saul was actually the people's choice because the people said, "Give us." They told God, "Give us a king like the other people." So God gave them. Saul was the people's king, but David was God's king. And he says he was after God's heart. David had malleable. He was malleable clay. You could, if, if God just wakes him up and, and tells him, "Go to this place," okay. yani, there's an assurance David will just follow it to the instruction. If God tells him, "Don't do this," yeah, yani, he had. He was. He was. He was easy. Clay. So, so the question to you, even the viewers, is. What type of clay are you? What type of now what type yeah. of clay are you? Yeah. <laughs> uh, is it the clay that God can easily mold? Because that's where he'll get in any. Because even w- what you're talking about your weakness, he's like you you see kustue because my power will be made perfect in that weakness. But as long as you're malleable, even with your weaknesses I'm able to use you. Because as long as I'm able to mold you, yeah. I'll sort out easy to zingine that really you think they are stumbling blocks. Yeah. But clay that cannot be molded, yeah. I think it's one of the clays that, you know, it's 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 it's, it's unusable. That's why it's it's uh, there's that popular saying that God qualifies the called. Yeah. Because as long as the called Have. are moldable. <laughs> Yeah, God will use them in whichever way, and and we've seen Him through, through the Bible. Use really, people will disqualify. Yeah. Faithfulness. Now get me the Nikaha. I know, Moshiri. You're always leaving us like, whoa. Huh? Please, can you drop a fire emoji? If <laughs> <laughs> Moshiri has spoken to your heart. <laughs> so I think for me, what I would say is number one, once. And this Pastor Sheila mentioned last week. Yeah. Once you uh, God has delivered you, let's say, and you're born again, you've done discipleship. Mm-hmm. It means the things you used to do in the past, you have stopped doing. Yeah. So you need to replace those things with new things. Mm-hmm. So if you're not keen enough to now position yourself in a place of service, because when we come on Sunday, we receive. But that's not enough when it comes to the kingdom, you know. And Jesus came on this earth to serve. That was his sole purpose. And even I remember in John 13 when he was washing um, his disciples' feet. Mm-hmm. Uh, Simon Peter did not want. But God said, um, unless I do this, you have no part with me. So if Jesus came to serve, I think we also need to be able to serve. And through us serving, um, we're able to unlock certain things. For me, I look at, I know people usually say that, oh, you know, serving is not giving me anything. I'm not feeling any impact. What am I doing? I'm not seeing it. But for me, I look at serving, it's like you're tithing in the kingdom of God. Because I feel like our currency is not money. When it, our spiritual currency is not money. Mm-hmm. You know, it's prayer. It's, it's, it's serving in the kingdom. So I would say the more, the more you serve in the kingdom of God, the more you're building your capacity. Mm-hmm. You know, yesterday we were doing a Bible study and we were talking about when Jesus comes, we will live in glorified bodies, right? And then that would mean spiritual bodies. So imagine if you have not been building yourself on earth. What what do you have to say about it? So you look at serving as I am tithing for the kingdom. It's like praying. When we pray, we obtain promises. When we pray, you know, we are we are, we are dealing with spiritual warfare. So it's like it's like cashing a check. I look at serving for me like cashing a check. Anytime I contribute to the kingdom of God, I know I have deposited something. And even though I may not see it now, I'll see it in the future. Okay. Yes. And 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 for me, I don't look at it as I because you see, we are, I call I call myself the microwave generation. I want everything now. Gen Z. <laughs> Man, dear Lord, I want I want I want money now. I want a husband now. Why do I have to be patient? Why are you molding me? Why are you molding me? Why do I need to be molded? Naskia, <laughs> Jack your husband now. You know, but God is teaching me that I have to be patient. Yeah. You know, there's some things that I need to to unlearn and relearn. Mm-hmm. And you see now, even in king in, in in the kingdom, when you start serving, some certain gifts start to come out in your life. You know, yeah, some certain uh, responsibilities are given to you. So you you start elevating. And and you no, know, God has even given us the willpower. You can serve wherever you want. Mm-hmm. He's not telling you where you make work or pastor unless God has actually told you obey the Holy Spirit. But He's given you the willpower to choose. This is where I want to serve, and I know eventually you will see the fruits of your labor. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, that's all I have to say. Oh, wow, you, yes. you have said you all have said it so well. Hey, can I subscribe to your channel? You can channel also. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I think even I would not want to add anything further to that because I think in in, in all of this is is what Mashuli has said, especially that last part, which even you have alluded to, that your faithfulness will unlock the breakthrough. Because mm-hmm. I think sometimes we will serve hoping for to unlock to touch God's heart. Mm-hmm. It's like the way you fast, so you're fast, not just fasting. So, like, Sainiko, I've dedicated 20 years of my life in ministry. I want a big car, big house. I want to, but you see, mm-hmm. you work to, to the end goal, forgetting all the malleability part. You don't work to serve mm-hmm. in faithfulness. Mm-hmm. Like Jack, you know, you're entering a new ministry. You're like working to make sure now if they see me, then I'll be seen by me. Then now, mm. when they post this thing on mm. internet, then I'll be spotted by a TV person. Then I'll get a job. Yes. And you leave faithfulness to God. Yeah. As in faithfulness to God in that in that department, you're just thinking of serving for the whole, which is selfish. Mm. So I think there are many many a new point because eh, faithfulness is what will unlock the the breakthrough. Mm. But again, also if I am Malia Bukli, because you can be clear that anyway, Iko too. Yeah. Uko toko mwe resist, mwe resist. Uko ah God, nini nini staki mambo yako nini nini. But you're like the Lord says, bring myself, bring you, bring yourself to me. Allow me to mold you mm-hmm. into what I want, and then. Mm-hmm. So it's so the, maybe that's why even it's easy for people to complain that God is not blessing me. Ni mesa na sina breakthrough because we've forgotten the heart of ministry and the faithfulness mm-hmm. to the call. We just want what would come. Or what you have had, or when you see Moshe is life changing, you can serve and take over Jama. Jama must say, "This morning, Zakir Zuni nice on you. Is it departments in Ghana? You journey, you journey because you're thinking you're loving the giver of the, you're yeah. loving the gift and what it can bring, and not serving the gift giver. Yeah. So I think I would not add anything there. Just to maybe close for us with um, with two prayer points, and this is to encourage you who is watching who. Number one, I'd written for. There are people who, and you remember when we had the volunteers prayer day, Pasi was asking us to pray for people who, they're in church and they kind of want to serve, but all those things, they're thinking they're not worthy. Yeah. Their souls, because they're yeah. thinking, hey, but, okay, but mm-hmm. how will people see me when they see me in a church serving? They're afraid of what was their past. We need, so that we can pray for them to remember that when God has chosen you, it doesn't mean matter where he's brought you from yeah. he has forgiven you and he's made you a new creation yeah. so you can't let that continue holding you but there are people who it's really not easy to let go so the first person we are praying for is for those who are they want to serve they want they don't have a burden for ministry because they feel like they are not worthy and then mm-hmm. the second group of people is they want to serve but then they don't have clarity on where they're just like I know because I don't know it's like that's question 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 but their hearts are there but they just don't have clarity to be able to serve again because I think faithfulness will come with also having because also God ni wampango hatataka ushinde leo yungi a department uske I ni nice to make sure that you pastor but I'm a tingi ring as easy you be ring kuna nye isa ni like si mba haya si hai ni require too much so those two people for the ones to get clarity and secondly the ones who you just want to be able to say my past is my past I'm a new creation and I want to serve in the kingdom so I'd love for you Moshiri to close for us with that prayer and just invite them to get the courage to say here yeah, i am lord use me yeah okay. uh, let, let me give you some some pointers mm-hmm. you, you you may be wondering as in where where will i get that power to serve na you know all that thing but but i think in 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 god's economy it's very clear you provide the sacrifice he provides the fire mm-hmm. you provide the fire you bring the sacrifice which is yourself the fire and everything will come from him and you just take the first step which is the first step of sacrifice the rest of the things will just be unraveling as you, as you make a step another step unravels and another step unravels like that the second thing is that in regards to your, to your past i'll just say what i keep saying cover yourself with the righteousness of christ because the, the, it's it's your past and basically there's nothing you can do about it but i've learned this about god that when you take that step of faithfulness he has a way of covering you with his glory so that you see it yet you don't see it <laughs> someone may see a weakness in you but then they're not seeing it again it's because the glory of god becomes like a bodyguard on you and and, and you get covered by the righteousness of Christ. So someone can see it uh, but then they are not seeing it. So that that that's 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 your only fallback plan yani. 
that that you fall back on the righteousness of God. So let us pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I commit those people who are seeking clarity on the places you have called them, Almighty Father. You declared, O oh God, that the body of Christ is a body, O oh Almighty Father, with different parts, O oh Almighty Father. And the heart cannot say to the eye, I do not need you. Neither can the toes tell the hair that they are one, one is more important than the other. But you have placed us within the body of Christ, O oh Almighty Father, to serve each other, O oh Almighty Father, with our gifts, O oh Almighty Father. And so today, O oh Almighty Father, I pray that you may open up the eyes of someone who is listening to us, O oh Almighty Father, that they may see the place you have called them to be, O oh Almighty Father. If they are fearing, O oh God, that there is going to be loss, in, 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 in stepping forward and following you, Almighty Father, may I remind them of this scripture, Almighty Father, that you said that when we leave uh, houses, uh, father, mother, sisters, and everything, we shall get a hundredfold in the kingdom and in the next in the next uh, place, eternal life, Almighty Father. So I came to remind them, Almighty Father, that there is no loss in God. That where they, they are going to be serving and where they are going to be going, Almighty Father, may they be reminded, oh God, that there is no loss in you. That you are, you are, you are, you are, you are one who is capable of uh, restoring to us all that we have lost, Almighty oh Father. So let that not be a fear that there is going to be a loss in service, Almighty oh Father. I pray, oh God, that you may ignite someone's passion, Almighty oh Father, for you, Almighty oh Father, that they may seek you, Almighty Father, and that their relationship with you may flow into service, Almighty Father. I also pray, Almighty Father, for those who uh, the fear of joining ministries is their past, Almighty Father. They are telling you, oh God, I have done so many things, Almighty Father. My life is not worthy of, of service to you, Almighty Father. But I came to remind them, Almighty Father, that it is not their worthiness, is the worthiness of Christ that makes us worthy, O mighty Father. It is what was placed before you, the sacrifice that is Christ, that makes us have value, O mighty Father. For the value of a human being is the cost of the sacrifice of Christ. So it's not their worthiness, it's your worthiness, O mighty Father. And so I pray, O mighty Father, that you may remind them and, and, and this may continue being uh, reinforced within their spirit, O Mighty Father, that they are this, the righteousness of Christ. They are, they are righteous in Christ, O Mighty Father, and that your glory shall protect them and cover them, O Mighty Father, in those places that they feel that they are weak and they feel that they are embarrassed about and they feel that there is shame, O Mighty Father. As you did in the place of Gilgal, O Mighty Father, when you rolled away the shame and the degrees of the Israelites, O Mighty Father, I pray, O Mighty Father, that right now, O Mighty Father, you may roll away someone's disgrace and shame that is preventing them from serving you, O Mighty Father. And may, also, may they also be reminded, O Mighty Father, that their greatest ministry will come out of their greatest mistakes and pain, O Mighty Father. Because there are people we cannot reach Almighty Father, but when they tell their testimony, when they share their story, it's going to be draw someone to you, Almighty Father. As you say that when you're lifted up, you shall draw men unto themselves, Almighty Father. May we become malleable clay, Almighty Father. May we become clay that is moldable, that is fit for the use of the Master, Almighty Father. And may you prune us, Almighty Father, so that we may be made fitting vessels for your use, Almighty Father. We provide the sacrifice May God, may you provide the fire. May you meet the sacrifice with your fire, Almighty Father. Reignite someone's passion right now for ministry, Almighty Father. May someone right now uh, get a revelation of the gifts and the talents you put into them, Almighty Father. May we, for someone who's feeling uh, tired of doing ministry, I pray, Almighty Father, that you may give them a new grace for compassion of people. For it is compassion that will unlock the grace to serve people. I declare your people blessed, Almighty Father, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Wow. We thank God for all of you, even as those passions to serve are ignited, because truly in the house of the Lord, there's a lot of work to be done. The laborers are few, so come on, come and join us. Even where you serve, come and go and tell your pastor, today I want to serve. And yeah, I want to remind you that we have uh, Sunday services uh, at Nairobi Cinema. We have two services now. One is 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. And then the other one is 11 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. So you're very much invited and also subscribe to our channel. Go and watch previous episodes if this is your very first time watching the City Lighters Bible Study. And we say that God bless you and God keep you and may his face continue to shine upon you. Till next bye bye. time. Bye.